And Ed Cranepool is one of our favorites. Any Met fan, Brooklyn boy, myself, Joe Takapina, too. We've all got our number seven jerseys. Eddie was there from day one right through 1979, 18 years as one of our proudest and best New York Mets. Here he is, the great Ed Cranepool. Eddie, what's going on, my man? How you feeling? Well, right nowadays, I'm just uh, hanging in there because I had the knee surgery three weeks ago, and uh, I'm cooped up in the house, and I'm going stir crazy. Oh, my God. Wait a second. When I saw you last, maybe last year, is it, this is not your first knee surgery, is it, Eddie? No, it's my first one. It's the first oh, time I've had any kind of surgery, you know. And, okay. Uh, you know, it just took uh, years of work, uh, you know, in the ball field and stuff like that, and it finally gave out, and I had to do it. I had no reason. So are, are, are you on a cast right now? No, no I had um, a replacement. I had a knee replacement down at the University of Miami, and it's coming along well. It's three weeks. I'm ahead of schedule. So hopefully in another two or three weeks, I'll be able to move around better than I ever was. Oh, I good. Might make a comeback. Right. Maybe you'll come and you'll start stealing. You'll be like Bump Wills. You'll be, a more, you'll be stealing bases. <laughs> you, never, you never know. I'm liable. As long as I can still hit, I'm okay. <laughs> well, you could always hit. I mean, uh, the day you were born, you came out ready to hit, Eddie, and I'm sure you still can. You know what's funny? You mentioned Florida. I'm not sure if you're in Florida now, Long Island, but years ago, I played in the very last ever Joe DiMaggio celebrity Joe, game. Right. We put that on for years. Yeah. Yes, and you were there. You I th was it was it Wayne Garrett? I don't remember the whole Wayne, team. Wayne was there, Art Shamsky was there, Ronnie Svoda would come in yes. and of course many, many other National League stars. But we started that game oh twenty five, thirty years ago, more than that maybe now. And yeah. we played a long time and we started it. Billy Williams and myself actually started the game and we Secured all the players and went on for a long time too, and then we named it after Joe DiMaggio. We wanted him to be involved. He lived in Florida, and with his name, it really got, got an out a lot of uh, publicity yeah. down here. And well, they got the uh, the, the children's hospital was named after Joe. And again, I played in the very last one at that stadium in Fort Lauderdale where the Yankees used to play. In fact, Dennis Oil Can Boyd was pitching, and he threw me a curveball, and I went to the mound, and I whispered in his ear, next time you throw me one of those, I'm going to beat your ass in front of everybody. And then I, I ground it out. <laughs> I don't blame you. Some of the pitches took it a little serious, you know, but we had a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, it was you. great. It was great. So, Eddie, listen, you live long enough, thank God, and uh, you're a wonderful guy. Every Met band loves you. Every New Yorker loves you. I mean, you're legitimately a New York legend. But, you know, one of the, one of the I guess, the downsides of living a long time is you see a lot of people pass away. And uh, Buddy died a couple of days ago, really at the end there when he was suffering from Alzheimer's, just like your teammate Tom Seaver did. It was right. awful for Buddy, but, but I know you've got great memories as well. So let's go right there, Ed Cranepool's memories of Buddy Harrelson. Well, you know, he joined the ball club in the early 60s. I think it was 64, 65. He was one of the first young players that came up and helped me. Uh, I was with the ball club in 62, and I was stranded all by myself, and I didn't have a lot of fun playing the game. But once they added guys like Buddy, he was great because he was such a tireless worker. He was willing to do everything for the ball club. He just wanted to stay with the Mets. And he, he went out to the field. He went out in the wintertime, secured all the little leagues, went out and spoke to them, gave them trophies. Him, like myself, we did a lot of things to promote, you know, the goodwill of the Mets in the early 60s. And it really worked because they started to draw a lot of fans. And by the time we won in 69, we were really the the lead team. We took over for the Yankees. They were great in the beginning years. Then they struggled in the middle, and, and we took over. And it was an organization at that time. We won two World Series with a ball club that built around our own farm system. And uh, Buddy was one of the tireless workers who was a great asset to the Mets. Take me back to game three uh, after you beat the Orioles to win the World Series in 69. You get back, like you mentioned, in 73. Tough loss to Oakland. Rusty Staub was great that series. Um, but uh, game three against the Reds in the NLCS when Pete Rhodes <laughs> slides into second base. And, and Pete Rhodes is a tough guy. I mean, that's a, even now, he owned that restaurant down in Boca a decade ago. I wouldn't mess with Pete. But uh, buddy, buddy won't scare nobody. Tell me about that little brawl at second base. Well, it wasn't much of a fight because Pete is, you know, two over 200 pounds and Buddy was 150 pounds from the first day of spring training. You know, so there really wasn't much of a fight. But the, Pete was very aggressive. And, you know, the throw by, by 
by uh, Buddy Harrelson was over his head. He was about 15 feet from the base, but Buddy never got out of the base path. And Pete Rose was trying to excite his ball club, and he just ran him over. And it wasn't much of a fight. Like I said, it lasted about 10 minutes, and that was it. But Buddy made himself a name. He stood up to everybody. He was an aggressive player. He was a great asset to the Mets. You know, times have changed. I, you know, so love guys like Buddy Harrelson. You know, he was out there every day and was just an amazing fielder, gold glove winner. Another guy that comes to mind like that is Mark Belanger. And then all of a sudden, Ed Crane pulled the shortstops, the Harrelsons and the Belangers, who are always the best defensive player on the field, along with the center fielder, of course. All those guys were hitting well, 30 were. home runs. They, they, well, maybe that was a different era, but right. in our era, we didn't take any of those fancy pills that made you hop around a little bit, I guess, you know, so <laughs> we didn't get a chance to do that. We used the old baseballs that were tough to tie up, yeah. you know, was soft and didn't go too far. <laughs> You're right, uh, but the whole thing changed because then guys like A-Rod and, and Garcia Parra, and, and, and now it's, it's, it's every day, but shortstop started banging the ball. But to watch Buddy out there play shortstop as the guy that caught it at first base, how amazing was that? He had a great arm for a little guy. I mean, it was amazing how, how hard he could throw the ball from the deep uh, part of the infield. He'd go way in the hole, backhand the ball, and come up throwing. A lot of guys you see nowadays will bounce it on the AstroTurf or whatever, and they'll give a big hop to the first baseman. But he threw the ball across the diamond, and usually I could catch it about chest high, and it made an easy play for us. And then uh, we talked about the the end, of course, the Alzheimer's, Tom Seaver. Also pretty important, I think you'd agree, Eddie, to those great teams. He he had it, too. And, um, well, that would be tough to watch. Oh, it was sad because they both got the same thing, and that, that was surprising. They both hung out together. They didn't go out after the games. They went back to their room. They had room service. They were together, you know, 24 hours of, you know, at a time on the road. So I don't understand how they both got it, but unfortunately we lost two of our key players, and, it's very sad to see Buddy. I mean, at the end, was a tough time to watch him um, because he couldn't recognize any of his players. So oh, it was a very sad day for the Mets mm. organization. But on a, on a good note again, Ed Cranepool, the great Ed Cranepool, just the, one of the nicest, decent men you'll ever meet. And what a great ball player, 18 years with the Mets. You know, the work he did on Long Island with baseball, the Ducks, right to the day he died yesterday, he still uh, partly owned that baseball team. And the Ducks have become a big deal out there, Mr. Bolton and all those guys. Uh, that is a, a genuine attraction out on Long Island. That was a big thing Buddy did. He sure was, and they drew a lot of people, you know, because of all the excitement that Buddy created and all the activities that Mr. Bolton and, and Buddy created for the fans. They came out. They loved baseball. For $6, they get a box seat, enjoy a good baseball game, and see good baseball. They won the championship many, many years. Buddy was the manager. He was the coach. I think he even sold tickets. Who the hell knows? He <laughs> did anything he could to help baseball in New York, and uh, we're going to miss him. We well, really I'm, we are, and uh, I'm out of time, unfortunately, Eddie. But um, feel better. Uh, I'm glad you got the knee done. You are going to feel great. You're going to look great. Enjoy your time in Florida when you get back. I'd love to see you again. You're uh, you're a terrific guy, good friend, and New York loves you. Thank you so much for these few minutes. Thank it meant a lot you. to me. Thanks very much. We'll see you up in New York. All Bye. right, Eddie. There he is, the all-time great Met Ed Cranepool.